Hi, I'm Fiona Davis. And I'm Greg Wands, and we're the co-authors of the audio novella, The Gimlet Slip. The Gimlet Slip is set in Prohibition-era New York City, and that ran from 1920 to 1933. And at that time, you could not buy, produce, import, sell alcohol at all. And so because of that, the people started making their own. And what they do is they would mix hard liquor, juniper oil, and glycerin. And then on top of that, you had to dilute it with water. But because the, the spigot in a bathroom sink was too small for the long bottles that they used, instead they would fill it up in the bathtub, and hence the name bathtub gin. Now, the gimlet itself has an interesting history. In the 18th century, uh, a doctor serving the British Navy came up with the cocktail as a way to take the daily rations that the officers were given of gin and dilute that with the shot of uh, lime juice that they used to ward off scurvy, therefore balancing out the flavor a bit and uh, creating a cocktail in the process. In the mid-20th century, uh, Raymond Chandler mentions uh, the gimlet in his book, The Long Goodbye, where he contends that the proper way to make a gimlet is half gin, half roses, lime juice, and nothing else. Now, we're going to use a little bit of a deviation on that recipe. Normally, they're made with either sugar or simple syrup. And what we're going to do, our twist on the gimlet, which is uh, going to be the gimlet slip, we're going to remove the sugar and we're going to add in some um, freshly squeezed grapefruit juice, which will continue the f uh, flavor profile with the citrus notes and also introduce a little bit of sweetness with the natural fruit sugars. And it's healthy, right? So far as we can tell ourselves. <laughs> now, Greg was a bartender in a, in a prior life, and so he's going to show us how it's done. Hopefully I haven't gotten too rusty. For this cocktail, it's going to be a 4 to one ratio. Four parts gin, two parts of the uh, squeezed grapefruit juice, and one part of the lime juice. So get your um, jigger here. Use the ounce side, which is the smaller one. We'll do one, two, three, four on the gin. We'll do two pours on the grapefruit. We'll finish it off with one ounce of the lime juice. Now the fun part. Make sure you get a good seal on the shaker. You want to get the uh, shaker almost too cold to hold to the touch. That's a good indication that your, uh, your drink is mixed. Finish your shake. Remove the top. Finish it off with a little of the natural oil from the peel. And voila, the gimlet slip. Beautifully done. Thank you. You want to uh, help me uh, drink these? Cheers to the gimlet slip. Cheers. Cheers. So what I loved about writing this book is it's kind of a mix of our two genres. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was fun too with the, all the historical research was a lot of fun. I mean, there's so much great stuff from 1930s New York with the political corruption and the graft and all of the, you know. Um, Larger than life criminals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was great. It was really, it was a, a really like rich era to draw from. And I have an incredible amount of uh, respect for historical fiction writers such as yourself after that because it's a real deep dive. As do I for, for you know, suspense mystery writers. That's a, that's a whole art in yeah. itself. Yeah, I think we uh, borrowed from each other's skill set a little bit. It was fun. Yeah, it really was, was fun. And we also threw in a dash of noir. And yeah. that, that yeah. I think, is what elevated it. Yeah, the writing style, the language is fun. It's yeah. just, it, was, it was cool to be able to kind of blend genres that way and, uh, and riff a little bit. Who was your favorite character or one of them? That's a, I mean, they're all great. I really like Joe, though. There's something about Joe. She's she's gritty and headstrong and determined, but really savvy. And she's a survivor. You know, I mean, her backstory is really. I think you you, you really root for Joe. Yeah, she's a street smart teenager. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she's got to really look out for herself and uh, and kind of do a lot of it on her own. And she's she's living by her wits. She's a compelling character. But they're all great. I mean, they're really. I think it's a it's a great 
trinity of characters. You know? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm drawn to Lydia sure. because, of course, she is this woman running this criminal empire out of the, the top of the penthouse of the uh, Plaza Hotel. So sure. you have those, you know, fancy locations and great fashions, yeah. which is one of my favorite things to write about. Of course. And then Sam is, you know, the haunted detective. So there's a lot of... Uh, with the heart of gold. With the heart of gold, right. <laughs> As they have. Sure, sure. No, it was a good time. It was a good time. And we really got lucky, too, with the... Um, we got some really, really great, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, voice performers yeah. as well. I mean, it was, it was fun to listen to the audio samples when they came in. And just, you could tell right away the people who really got what we were going for with that era, with the language, the, t the atmosphere and the texture of all of it. You, you know, the, the, the three that we got really nailed it. Yeah, Carolina, Carolina Hoyos, yep. uh, Patty Matson, Yep, and Marco Palias. Who are incredible. And when, yeah. when we heard their takes, yeah. it's like the character leapt off yeah. the page. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was great. It was really great. Yeah. Congratulations. Hey, you too. From Penguin Random House Audio and Dutton Books.